All right, my viewers, for months I've wanted to revisit the RX 5700 XT, or rather, take a look at one of the custom variants out there of this AMD graphics card. I suppose there's no need to remind you guys about the fact the reference card released by AMD was nowhere near perfect. In terms of performance, it managed to impress from the very first moment on. That never was the problem. Not even the power draw was an issue, since thanks to the RDNA architecture and 7 nanometer process, the efficiency is looking good. Where things didn't look so good was the temperature aspect and the accompanying high noise levels. But let's be honest, such results were never really an exception, not even in the past when dealing with reference designs. So we shouldn't necessarily just point our finger in AMD's direction, since Nvidia has done similar stuff in the past with their reference cards too. So for today's test I got myself one of the cheapest, but yet supposedly well-rated RX 5700 XT graphics cards. This model is from the AIB power color and at the time of this video currently comes in at about 400 US dollars. Obviously I didn't want to spend too much, after all there even are significantly more expensive editions of the RX 5700 XT out there in the market, even by power color those usually happen to be clocked a little higher. What I want to find out today is whether or not we still have to deal with those quote overheating issues, end quote. Because here's the thing, even among custom variants of various AIBs, there have been some reports on temperature related issues, even though from the outside those cards seem to come with some truly beefy and capable cooling solutions. However, temperatures, especially those of the video memory, weren't a whole lot better than what we've seen with the reference cards. Now I don't want to name any names, since I haven't carried out the tests myself, but I'm just letting you know about this. Anyway, today we'll find out whether or not this version by power color is any good. Let's go. Even though I probably have to count myself to the minority there, I actually do like the aesthetics of AMD's reference model. It's pretty sleek and elegant, but I feel the same way about this power color version. I mean, there's nothing spectacular going on, all is actually kept dead simple, but to be honest, often that's exactly what I love. Of course, I gotta say, the shroud used on here is out of plastic, even though at first glance it can trick you into thinking it's actually metal. Luckily, the backplate is out of metal. What's also noticeable is the length of this custom card. It's shorter than AMD's reference model, therefore should fit fairly easily into most smaller cases. And since the question surely will be asked, nope, no RGB lighting on here. We only get the essentials. So it certainly does make me happy to have semi-passive cooling going on here. That's exactly what I'm also looking for when it comes to GPUs. Meaning at idle the fans will remain off and will only start spinning once temperatures get too high. I love that, especially when having the PC running for many hours, this really prolongs the lifespan of the fans and prevents unnecessary dust buildup over time. But it seems we can't truly go without active cooling under loads with the RX 5700 XT. Well at least I'm not super happy with the results I got at idle. You'll see what I'm talking about very soon. Luckily it's not that big of a deal, since you can have the fans spin up at all times too. This leads to great idle temperature results as expected. No matter if we are going for semi-passive or active cooling, in terms of noise levels, there's hardly much of a difference noticeable. It's close to inaudible. Once you put some load onto the GPU though, the fans quickly become very audible. However, I wouldn't consider it annoyingly loud or so. But no doubt, the two fans clearly can be heard. When it comes to the specs, I can tell you right away, from a technical point of view, there's no difference between Power Colors version and AMD's reference card. In theory, we should be expecting close to identical performance then. Of course, we want this whole video to be a bit more interesting, which is why I brought the comparable RTX 2060 Super counterpart by Nvidia into the game. Apparently, one of the bigger differences between those two GPUs is the TDP, but TDP, other than many expect, doesn't necessarily always translate into power consumption. TDP stands for thermal design power and actually tells us how much heat is being produced in watts, but it can be an indicator for power draw. But enough of playing professor, now let's finally take a look at how well such a custom version actually performs as opposed to the reference design. And most importantly, what kind of temperatures this card runs at.
So as you have seen, Paracolor did a fairly good job with this cooler they slapped onto the RX 5700 XT. Even though we don't need to spend a fortune on this card, we as the consumers still get a great graphics card with good performance as well as good cooling, the latter being the work of Paracolor. I mean, we definitely can speak of an excellent WQHD 1440p gaming GPU. Even 4K is somewhat doable, although playing at maxed out graphics details will certainly somewhat slow the RX 5700 XT down. Same applies to Team Green's counterpart. But I don't want to tell you 4K is impossible with these kind of cards. If you tinker with the settings, or rather adjust those, pretty good results can be achieved. But neither the 5700 XT nor the 2060 Super can seriously be considered for 4K gaming. Now to get back to the initial question in the beginning of the video, does such a custom variant of the RX 5700 XT still overheat? Well, that depends on the AIB and its model. We definitely cannot say each and every version does manage to keep the temperatures in check. Luckily, however, today's Paracolor variant happens to be one of the good ones. Compared to AMD's reference design, the temperatures are under control here and the noise levels are much, much more bearable, which really couldn't be said about the reference card, depending on who you ask and what fan settings you go for. It never really was the GPU temperature that was concerning, it was the GDDR6 VRAM. 96 degrees Celsius while gaming with the reference card, unfortunately, were no exception. And the thing is, according to the official specs of GDDR6 video memory, GDDR6 should not exceed the 95 degree mark. So in the long term, we could certainly expect some surprise failures with the reference card. But luckily, all that doesn't seem to apply to today's Paracolor RX 5700 XT. I only got to 77 degrees on the VRAM and that's a good result. But I have to admit, the semi-passive mode did concern me a little bit. Usually I'm a huge fan and supporter of semi-passive cooling on GPUs, but if you let this Navi GPU slowly cook at idle, temps will slowly climb all the way up to like 55 degrees. I mean, these aren't really concerning results, but I do prefer seeing 33 degrees with active cooling this time around. The more interesting part, in my opinion, is to compare this GPU with the counterpart of the competition. That would be Nvidia's RTX 2060 Super. Both the RX 5700 XT and RTX 2060 Super come in at roughly the same price, so comparing these two makes perfect sense. And and in terms of performance, we are looking at an exciting battle. There is no clear winner in my opinion, even though the 5700 XT does tend to do slightly better in a few game titles. At the end of the day, it depends on the game you play and how well things are looking in terms of optimizations. Then your choice also depends on what kind of features you want from AMD or Nvidia. AMD's big advantage, especially when it comes to future-proofness, are those 8GB of video memory. But wait, Nvidia isn't playing easy on their arch enemy, they also equipped their RTX 2060 Super with a whopping 8GB of VRAM. But we can't say for sure whether or not this capacity will be sufficient for future game titles. But given how things are looking now, 8GB could end up being a bit tight. But since both GPUs by AMD as well as Nvidia offer 8GB, we consumers don't have a choice anyway, or do we? A big selling point for Team Green, on the other hand, is ray tracing. Although I think we all agree the RTX 2060 Super doesn't really offer enough ray tracing power to really make a significant difference in the gaming experience. For streamers or users that do lots of recording, Nvidia certainly could end up being the better choice, at least that's my opinion. Especially after taking a look at the recording quality. Here for instance, so you get an idea on what I'm talking about. A recording of Red Dead Redemption 2, on the left recorded with the RX 5700 XT, to the right not the RTX 2060 Super, but the GTX 1660 Super. So ignore the frame rate, this is not what it's about now, just pay attention to the recording quality. I find the results to look much better on Nvidia's side, even with a 1660 Super. And now, whatever changed with the custom card by Paracolor, the power draw has improved by quite a bit. So if you were to ask me which graphics card out of the two you should go for, quite frankly, I wouldn't know the answer to that. Both the RX 5700 XT as well as RTX 2060 Super pretty much go head to head. If it weren't for the superior encoding on Nvidia side, from a raw performance standpoint, I would probably gravitate towards the RX 5700 XT. 
TXT. However, you can't do any wrong with either of the two. The choice is all yours. At the end of the day, it may even come down to what deals can be found for your final choice. One thing's for sure, I can definitely recommend picking this PowerColor RX 5700 XT up. This GPU also clearly deserves my gold award. And yeah, this wraps this video up. Thanks a lot for watching.